Hello, all you paranormal seekers. Welcome back to the second episode of Paranormal Corner. Today, we have my friend Laura on the line. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, and you have some experiences that you like to share. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's get down to the first question then. Uh, how long had it, how long had that truly been going on, and when did it, did you start to see or, and or experience the activity? Um, well, well, from the very beginning, um, it was extremely late. Um, I had moved in with my family to my home, uh, back in October of 2001. Um, there were extremely small instances once in a while. Um, of course, you know, a noise, uh, footstep, maybe seeing something and, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, very late stuff. Um, nothing at all really happened over the years. Um, then in uh, de December of uh, 2016, my mm -hmm. father had gotten uh, pretty sick, and uh, we had no idea why. <clears throat> and when... We had found out he when uh, when he had gotten sick. Uh, that was when everything had uh, became very um, bad. Um, everything started becoming uh, very active, very harsh, um, and anything that we had experienced very light over the years became extremely. Like, it's an extreme nightmare, I guess you could say, for me and my family, um, especially my mother and my father. Um, I, I actually barely do talk about this, so it's kind of hard to... Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. How old is that? Um, we're not, well, we are not exactly too sure. Um, it's pro I, I would say it's probably at, at least at most like 50 or 60 years old, at least maybe, um, more. Have you done any <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you done any research on that? Um, well, tried before, um, but uh, nothing much ever came up. It was more, um, we had heard, uh, from, there was a lot of different things that we had heard um, about the house. Um, the house that we had moved in, um, next door is a big open field. Um, we had found out that there used to be a house in that open area, um, but it had been burned down to the ground. Um, we had uh, questions about it, and we had found out that there had been a, a fire um, several years prior, and... We knew that at least uh, two young children, two young children, had lost their lives in that fire um, that caught in the house, and that it had also uh, moved blaze over to the one side of my house, the other side that uh, my family uh, lived in. The 
So everything that had happened was crazy. It was um, very bad. Um, like I said, after my father had gotten sick, that's when the activity had increased about a thousand times. They, um, noises got worse. Um, we'd hear footsteps. You'd see something out of the corner of our eyes. Um, we'd feel it worse that somebody was watching you. Um, and there were things uh, being taken. In objects flying, um, disappearing, reappearing, uh, everything you can think of that um, could be possibly involved with a haunting, yes. Um, every, all those things happened, uh, even the scratches. It, it was... It was horrible, you know, especially with my father being sick, because we... We, we surely did not know what was going on at the time. It would have scratches and stuff on um, my nephews, um, who uh, I was helping to raise at the time. Uh, they appeared on uh, two, uh, two of them on their backs. We had uh, one time he had, one had gone uh, in a room by himself and he had gotten scratched so bad and when we went to go see um, it had scratched all over on his back and had written a word on there that it looked to be, appear to be like the word demon or something like that does he have any evil Did I what? We didn't know what was in the house. We had no idea. Um, as much of experience with the paranormal that I um, that I researched and dealt with, um, we originally thought it was a poltergeist. Um, thought it was a poltergeist at first. So we didn't want to pay no attention to it, let it go, and it, it didn't work that way. Because, um, like I said, it wasn't until the scratches is that we knew that there was something that was certainly wrong um, with everything. So we definitely knew that it was no damn poltergeist. That was no damn poltergeist. That was no ordinary spirit, no ordinary haunting whatsoever. So let's remind you, there were two young kids that were in, caught in the house fire. That could explain the uh, moving around and disappearing and reappearing. Because you know how kids are like move stuff around. Oh, absolutely. That's, uh, that's basically what I made a judgment on myself. That we figured it was, you know, just two kids playing around. Like I said, over the years, it, 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 the instances were, <clears throat> you know, very small, and they didn't they didn't happen often. They just happened on an occasion, where things would happen for several years. But it just got worse once my dad got sick. <laughs> Yes. So if you had an evil spirit, that means that somebody died either in the house itself that was bad or died, died around the house. Because that's when this, that or someone that, that evil, someone had that evil spirit attached to them and they brought it into the house. Right. Yeah, um, we've had a few times uh, things 
uh, the kids may have brought home. Um, we, we, we did actually, um, a couple of times the kids had brought stuff home from somewhere. Um, and from what I know, you know, it, honestly, it, I mean, a spirit can attach itself to anything, any object and whatnot. And you could easily be going out into a estate sale, yard sale, whatever, buy this object. And guess what? You're in fact, your home is infested with spirit because you brought this object into your home. So it's not something you're dealing with. We have, but we had no idea what it was, what was going on. We could not pinpoint uh, who or what it may have been. It was not easily done by me alone or any, any of my family, actually. In the We we did not know exactly uh, how many may have infested my parents' home. We did not we did not know. Um, we knew there was a possibly at least three or uh, four of them. but at least one of them was extremely violent. That could have been brought by, some, by someone in the household, or the person could have died there and was angry about how they died. So they're taking them on who's ever there. We, so, okay. Yeah, that's true. That's that's uh, that's absolutely true. Um, however, one of the things that uh, we were told was that there may have been a uh, gateway opened. A what? A gateway that was opened. Exactly. We had seeked help from uh, several people, all sorts of people. We did not know who to turn to, honestly, at that time. My mother was so afraid of everything uh, going on with my father being sick. <clears throat> It was more like we, we, my mother felt that we needed to get some help. I did, especially. And despite her beliefs, um, she was willing to seek help from any party, any, any party that may be possible. Um, we had help from several sorts of, of different groups of people. Well, on the, on the gateway, I have no idea why they are playing Ouija boards in the game section. Like, I don't know. Playing a Ouija board is not a game. If any kids are watching, do not, I repeat, do not mess with a Ouija board. Absolutely. Do not take it. Do not 
have to count your buyer for you. Just leave it where it is. Cause that's probably where it was before you guys moved into the house. Probably somebody bought somebody <coughs> bought one of those Ouija boards from <coughs> Target, Toys R Us, Walmart. Uh, well, I, well, then they would have had to do it down the street because, uh, the house had actually, um, uh, not been lived in for several years until my parents moved in. I mean, I I, I, I will admit, I've played with Ouija boards back in my day, you know, and it was an experience that, uh, you know, kind of turned me off from them, that's for sure. Never want to experience those again, to be honest. In February, in February, February 18, 1891, the first advertisement started appearing in papers. Ouija, the wonderful talking board. And it came from Pittsburgh. And a boom in Pittsburgh Pittsburgh and a Nazi shop. Yes. Hmm. At the time it only cost a dollar to spend. Interesting. Right. Yes. And I'm pretty sure I brought him in home. I don't know. I get unexplained scratches on my shoulder and my back every now and again. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure I brought him in home. Well, oh. yeah. Well, that's all the time for today. Laura, thank you for joining me tonight. You're welcome. And to all who is listening to me, stay tuned for the next episode where we dive into the story of David. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Stay spooky.